What's up, Algebra 2? Oof. May have shocked you there. We got a good video for you today. Um, I'm excited, and I'll tell you, probably the number one reason why I'm excited is this is the last section in the chapter. You made it. Whether you liked it or not, I'm betting almost all the money I possess on you probably didn't like it. Um, this is it, all right? It's a short chapter. Thank the good Lord for that because I'm not a huge fan of probability. I almost guarantee you're not, but it's okay, all right? You're going to make it. You're going to get through this. One more section. Um, we got some big problems we're going to get through, and you got to stick with me, all right? Don't stop watching these videos, all right? Watch them again and again. That's how you're going to understand it, all right? Yeah, we're going to do another Zoom uh, later in the week. We're going to be making sure that you guys are where you should be. But still, these videos are your closest, easiest lifeline of reviewing each section again and again and again. All right, so that's what it's going to take. It's that kind of dedication. And I know I could put that expectation on some of the junior hires. They're not going to do it. But you guys, you could do it, all right? You're the sophomore class. You guys are upping your game. I know you can do this, all right? So God's going to bless you. You're going to make it. Let's jump into it. All right, here we go. So we are in section six. This is titled Binomial Distribution. Weird name. You're going to see some interesting problems, all right? Right off the bat, Binomial Theorem. Okay, so basically what they're going to do is they're going to give you a simple little expression in parentheses and then they're going to say, hey, take this expression and bring it to maybe the fourth power or even the fifth power and they're going to say expand it. In other words, take something that starts out nice, neat and simple and just blow it up and make your answer this big thing that as I do this, it's like the whole screen. Okay, so. This is how you expand it. You're going to be doing combinations. Remember the trick I taught you using the calculator. It will save you so much time, especially on this section. You're going to be doing combinations for every problem. If not, go back, review it, take a look at your notes, review that video, do that. All right? So whatever n is, that's your exponent. That goes here. Then it's a combination and zero. Well, this first one will work out nicely. Then whatever x is, also think of x as whatever the first term is. It might just be x, but what if there's a coefficient? What if it's 2x, okay? You're going to take that whole first term and bring it to the n power. Whatever the second term is might just be y, but again, there might be a coefficient. Take it to the 0 power. It's a great way to start. Anything to the 0 is 1. Don't forget that. And then you'll see how this all expands out, okay? N combo one. Whatever the first term is, do N minus one. That's just the exponent minus one. And you'll see how this all expands, all right? Pause the video, write this down if you haven't done so, because I'm assuming you've already done that by now, and we're moving on, okay? So. I do want you to read example one, both parts A and B. This is gonna help when we do one A and when we do one B, because those problems in the book are very similar. Just another visual to help you guys in understanding this stuff, all right? Then copy binomial probability. It's on 838, that's the next page. And this right here is the little equation we're gonna use. These are word problems. And this equation is what's going to get us through 2a and 2b, just in case you don't know what this stands for. That's basically the probability of event R. So we're going to get to this for 2a and 2b. Another combo, you can see it. Remember, n is always the bigger number, R is always the smaller number. And then p represents this is the success. So whatever you want, P is the probability of success brought to the R power. And then Q, that is the probability of failure. What are the odds that it's not going to happen? Okay. Now I can tell you that those two things will always add up to one. 
So in other words, let's say the odds are a 25% chance of success. Well, what's the other opposite of failure? 75. All right, so it's always going to add those two together to be 1. So that's helpful to know. And then what power is this? It's n minus r. So that's going to vary and change each time. All right, so let's take a look at 1a in our textbook here. And 1a is x minus y to the fifth. So 1a x minus y to the fifth. All right, got to love this book because right off the bat, the first one is to the fifth. So you know there's a lot to go on here. All right, got my little cheat sheet is going to help me. One thing I want you to know, if it's a minus or if it starts out in between the expression as a minus or a negative sign, this is always going to make a pattern in your answer. The pattern in your answer is going to be the first term is positive, the second term is negative, then positive, then negative. There's a pattern to it. Because if you look in the book, take a look at example one, both part A and part B, you're going to see it's a plus sign for both, and everything throughout the problem is just all positive numbers. But wouldn't you know at the first example, they got to throw a negative at us. So it's going to be a positive, then a negative, a positive, then a negative, and it's going to keep working itself out. So here's what we got to do. The first term is x, the second term is y, the exponent is 5. Start plugging things in based upon the binomial theorem. All right, so what we have is 5 combo 0, x to the fifth, y to the 0, minus. Now, this was positive, then the next one's a negative. 5 combo 1, x to the 4th, y to the 1, plus 5 combo 2. Quick pause. I am going to explain a little bit of each step here. I just want to write it all out. All right. x to the 3rd, y squared, minus 5 combo 3, x squared y to the third plus 5 combo 4, x, y to the fourth, and the final one minus 5 combo 5, x to the zero, y to the fifth. All right, so if you take a look up here at the binomial theorem and see how the pattern goes, you start with whatever n is, that's your exponent, that is what is always going in front of the combo. And then if you see the next one is always 0, and then it ups itself by 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you're going to go all the way up till you hit the number 5. Whatever that first number is, in this case it was 5, we're going to have to do this 5 times. That's what that means. All right, then your x or your first term is brought to whatever that exponent is. Again, in this case, it was 5, so you're going to have to go all the way till it gets to 0. The second term does the opposite. It starts at 0 and works its way up to, in this case, 5. All right, now use the calculator. Get all of these combos from the calculator, that's gonna be your easiest bet, okay? Let's simplify each of these expressions. The first one simplifies just to x to the fifth. That makes one, that makes one, minus, and then we're gonna have five x to the fourth y plus 10 x to the third y squared minus 10 x squared y to the third plus 5 x y to the fourth minus y to the fifth. Okay, so work out these combinations using the calculator. It's just going to save you time. That's how I got if there were a coefficient, that's where it came from. This is 1, y to the 0 is 1. So everything drops out just leaving x to the 5th. You're going to find the same thing happens in your last term. All right? 
If you have a five combo five, that's one. Over here, a five combo zero, that was also one. That's just something you could memorize. If I have a 10 combo 10, it's one. If I have a 10 combo zero, it's a one. Remember anything to the zero power, that's also one. So all that was left over in this last one was y to the fifth. And you'll kind of see everything in between had a coefficient and variables that didn't drop out. So this is it. This is the answer to 1a. Okay, take the time, copy that down, rewind it, look at it again. Let's do 1b, all right? 1b. All right, for those of you guys who like to cross it out, there we go, 1a is done. 1b, let's take a look here. And 1b, we're looking at a plus 2b, all brought to the third power. All right, so they gave us a little bit of a gift. Here's two gifts. It's plus sign. Everything in this is going to be a positive, and it's only to the third power. Yippee. However, we got a coefficient here, okay? So that is going to need to be dealt with throughout the problem, all right? So let's go ahead and write it all out. All right, so we have a three combo zero a to the third and then put this in parentheses because you have a coefficient put it in parentheses two b brought to the zero that'll work out nicely then we have a three combo one a squared put it in parentheses all right a three combo two a to the one, parentheses two b squared, and then our final one, three combo three, a is now to the zero, two b should be to the third. Okay, so simplify all of these expressions that you see here. This first one is gonna simplify just to a to the third, all right, plus, now, 3 combo 1 is 3. The a squared stays. 2b is brought to the 1 power. Now, you should notice I have a 3 and a 2, so that can go one step further and make 6. Then a squared b. And the a to the third just drops down. All right. 3 combo 2, that makes another three, then you have a, and then two b squared is gonna make four b squared. Now here you go again, three and four, that's gonna make 12, and then a b squared. If you have a question about the order of the variables, just go in alphabetical order. I'm trying to put a first, b second, just be consistent that way. All right, there's that one, this final piece right here. Remember a three combo three is gonna give you a one. A to the zero is gonna give you a one. So all you care about now is two B brought to the third power, which is gonna give you eight B cubed and bring that down here, eight B cubed. And this is your final piece of the answer, all right? There's no more like terms, there's no more things that can be put together or simplified. So there's one B, all right? Now, let's move on. Okay, wake up, make sure you're still with me, all right? Moving on to 2A, here we go. A little bit of a word problem. Um, okay, here we go. Can I also say I find it weird when I go off camera and read you problems as if you are a small child, but yet I still feel like I need to do that. There you go. Okay, boys and girls, 2A. The problem reads, students are assigned randomly to one of three guidance counselors. All right, right there, there's info that they are giving us. One of three guidance counselors, all right? That's gonna be important. So for 2A, 
If you remember, info that we had here, we have a success and we have a fail. What's the probability of getting one of these guidance counselors? They're going to tell us which one, and that guidance counselor is Counselor Jenkins. So what's the probability that Counselor Jenkins will get two of the next three students assigned? All right, there's multiple things that we are gathering. First, what's the probability of even getting Counselor Jenkins? That is a one-third chance. There's three counselors, just one Jenkins. So one-third chance says you're going to get her. That would be this guy, P, probability of success. What is Q, the probability of failure? Two-thirds, all right? In this case, there's a two-thirds chance you won't get her, a one-third chance you will get her. That's important for us to know. And then the final question they say is what is the probability two of the next three students will get assigned to her. Right here, that N is the three, and the two is the R. All right, so remember, the bigger number goes in front, the smaller number goes at the end. So what is the probability that two of the next three, so N equals three, R equals two, the one-third in this case is the P, the two-thirds in this case is the Q. So let's start to plug everything in. All right, we have three combo, two parentheses, one-third brought to the R power, which is two, multiplied by two-thirds, which is the Q, brought to the power of three, 3 minus 2. All right, in this case, that's just going to be 1. So now, work this out in the calculator. Work out the 3 combo 2. What is 1 third squared? 2 thirds brought to the power of 1 is just 2 thirds. When you work all of this out, you get 3 1 ninth 2 thirds figure all that out, you get a 2 over 9 chance that the next two students out of three will both get Jenkins. All right, so that is for number 2A. And for 2B, it's very similar, but of course it couldn't be as easy. It's a little bit more expanded, so stick with me. All right, here we go. 2B. Sorry, right. get that out there. 2B, 1B, 2A, all done. Last one, 2B. Okay, and here we go. Ellen takes a multiple choice quiz that has five questions with four answer choices. All right, so what that means is there's five different questions. Each question has A, B, C, D four answer choices, okay? All right, what's the probability that she will get, and this is important, at least, all right? Notice in the last problem, it never said that phrase, at least. That's important in this one. At least two answers correct by guessing. God forbid a student would guess on a quiz, right? You guys would never do that, no, okay. All right, so let's write down what we do know you have a one-fourth chance of getting a question correct, and you have a three-fourth chance of getting it incorrect. How do I know that? Because again, there are four answer choices per problem. All right? So one answer is correct, one-fourth chance if you're guessing, a three-fourth chance of getting it incorrect, then the next piece is that there are five questions. So that's going to be our N. So N equals five. And this is where the at least comes in. Unfortunately, the R is going to equal two, three, four, and five. This is the, the bummer part is essentially we have one, two, three, four problems all wrapped into one because they say at least 
two questions correct. Well, what if they got three or four or five? We need to know all of that wrapped into one problem. So here is the awesomeness of 2B. Okay, so this right here is our P. This right here is our Q. N won't change, that stays five. Unfortunately, R will change. Let's work out, what does it look like if R were two? You'd have a five combo two, a one fourth to the second power, and a three fourths to the five minus two power. You're gonna work that out, and then you're gonna add that. Now we gotta do it for the three, and then we're gonna do it for the four, and then we're gonna do it for the five. Oh, okay, here we go. A five combo three, one fourth brought to the third power, then a three fourths brought to the five minus three. Add that, now we're gonna do it for the four. A five combo four, one fourth brought to the four, three fourths brought to the five minus four. All right, now I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it all the way over here. So hopefully we can add that. We got a five combo five. Yeah, you can still see that, right? Okay, good, good. One fourth brought to the fifth power, three fourths to the five minus five. Oh boy, okay. So simplify, 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 simplify. And in a perfect world, maybe keep it as a fraction, just so you don't go even more insane through this, all right? So this is what it works out to be. We have a 10, and then each of these fractions, you have 1 16th, and then 27 over 64. Then you're gonna get 10 again, and then 1 over 64 four and nine over 16. So you can just see I'm simplifying all of this. Okay, this one right here is gonna be a five and then a one over 256 and then three fourths. And the final one here is a five and a big fraction of one over 1024, and then a nice one right there. All right, all right guys, it's been insane enough. You need to use the calculator even to get this. Use the calculator again so you're not going even more crazy. And all of this, all right, if you really want it, not that you really do, but you're gonna get it anyway. 135 over 512, 45 over 512, and then 15 over 1024, and five over 1024. Add all of that together, and you're gonna get approximate 95 over 256, which is roughly 0 0.371. These, just so you have both fraction and decimal. Whew, okay, 24 minutes. That might be my longest video. Again, my apologies, but I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was necessary and it had to get out there, all right? So you gotta know it, review it, take a look at it in all of its beautiful splendor, all right? I can only imagine what some of you are thinking. A few of you are coming to mind, I won't say names, and a few of you, I'm sure the words you're thinking, and I can't say those out loud either. All right, love you guys, miss you guys. See you in the next.